the hair and era in jujutsu kaisen it has been stated multiple times that the hair and era was when the practice of jujutsu was at its absolute peak and thanks to the events that occur in the calling games we are introduced to some of the monstrosities from this time period but even amongst these monstrosities we had sukuna a jujutsu sorcerer turned course user who reigned supreme during that period people would actually pray to sukuna and ask for his blessings sukuna would then go on to hold multiple honorary titles among them being the following one and this is a statement we hear from sukuna himself like who goes around calling themselves the fallen that very statement leads us to believe that sukuna is far stronger than what we had originally thought or maybe he lost an authority he previously had and so in this video we're attempting to find out what made the hair and air the peak of jujutsu with an arc like the calling games we get to see how strong sorcerers of the past really were and even besides the hair and air some of the other sorcerers we see far surpasses what most sorcerers sorcerers of the current era are currently capable of. I mean there is only a handful of sorcerers that are capable of taking on characters like Ishigori and Kashimo who are from 400 years ago. Old man Kashimo was so hungry for a fight that he entered a binding vow with Kenjaku. Kenjaku would enable him to become reincarnated as a calling game player in the future just so that he can fight Sukuna. And now we see that Kashimo has been reincarnated and as a player of the calling games he doesn't even seem to find any of the other players remotely interesting and that's mostly because most of the calling game players are sorcerers who had their course techniques awoken. Kashimo would then go on to no diff panda. Panda being someone who is currently up for promotion to grade 1 status. This as a fact just goes to show how weak the sorcerers of this generation are compared to the previous. Kashimo is only then satisfied when he has his fight against Hakari. And mind you, throughout that fight, Kashimo never used his course technique. But yet he was able to contend with Hakari. Hakari being someone who has statements that compare him to the second strongest sorcerer alive. That sorcerer of course being Yuta. We also have Kashimo statement of Ishigori, a sorcerer who boasts the highest cost energy output in all of history. Old Kashimo has no interest in fighting someone on the level of Ishigori. The disrespect is honestly real. Anyways, this same Ishigori would go on to be negative diffed by Sukuna, a sorcerer from the Heian era. But yet after Sukuna does this, he would go on to fight another sorcerer from the Heian era, Yoruzu, and Yoruzu would go on to put up a much better match for Sukuna. Now the first point I want to get across as to why I think the Heian era sorcerers were so strong. 1. Sorcerers of the Heian era had to be strong because of an adaptive feature. These sorcerers had to adapt to the strength of Sukuna. This is also the reason why sorcerers of this generation are strong as they are adapting to the strength of Gojo. When you think about it, if you compare the sorcerers from Gojo's generation to the sorcerers of Yuji's generation, you will notice a massive difference in their power levels. And so for the sorcerers of the Heian era to be able to survive, they had to be able to contend with a force like Sukuna. Another reason is probably because they had a much pure bloodline. What do I mean by this? We can use Momo for example. Momo is so weak because she is half Japanese and American, meaning her lineage has been watered down by adding genes from another family and so her knack for Jujutsu sorcery isn't as good. During the Heian era, even when you discount the credit of the strength of Sukuna, you would still find sorcerers on the level of Kenjaku and Tengen present. Tengen being the sorcerer with the best barrier techniques in all of history. Barrier techniques includes domain expansion and simple domain. This means that if Tengen were to use a domain expansion, then it would theoretically be stronger than that of Gojo's or even the previous users of the Six Eyes and Limitless technique. Kenjaku on the other hand is stated to be someone who can rival Tengen when it comes to barrier techniques. Tengen's cause technique literally grants him immortality and though he continues to age, the technique should not be discounted. And similar to Tengen, Kenjaku is able to move from bodies to bodies, maintaining a level of immortality as well. But but unlike how Tengen merges with a star plasma vessel, Kenjaku supposedly moves from dead bodies to another. An upside to this being the fact that Kenjaku is able to retain the cost technique of the host. Within the span of chapter 203 to 208, Kenjaku is able to prove to us that his strength should not go unacknowledged, as he's able to beat the combined might of Yuki, Sukumo, Choso, and Tengen. But yet, this Kenjaku sees himself as someone not being nearly on the same league as Sukuna. Moving past Kenjaku, we have Yoruzu. A sorcerer who was able to fare quite well against Sukuna. It's unclear whether she was looking out of confidence or 
ignorance, but Yoruzu was willing to fight Sukuna using Malevolent Shrine. Sukuna refuses to indulge her and chooses to use 10 shadows for reasons we all know. Yoruzu plays all her cards up until she uses her domain expansion. Three layers of affliction. Yoruzu's sure hit summons a perfect sphere. Perfect sphere is said to have an infinite amount of pressure. The only reason Sukuna was able to get out of this easy was because of the presence of Maharaga, as I strongly believe that most sorcerers would not have been able to survive that. Mind you, if you read Yoruzu's backstory in the Heian era, you would see that she's not treated like she's anything special when it comes to power. But yet, if Yoruzu was to fight most of the sorcerers of the current generation, she would win. Another example can be seen with Uro. Uro is a sorcerer that led troops of other sorcerers. This troop would then go on to face Yoruzu and Yoruzu will come out the victor. And Uro is the same person that was able to contend very well against Yuta in a fight in Sendai Colony. When you put the dots together, you will see that on average, most sorcerers from the Heian era far eclipses the average of sorcerers of today when it comes down to strength. When Yoruzu talks about Uro, she herself doesn't see Uro as anything special. Urahime is another sorcerer we know from the Heian era. However, unlike all the others, she hasn't really done much fighting in the series so far. We know that her course technique allows her to be able to create and manipulate ice. This ice seems to hold some measure of durability as it was able to hold an entire ensemble of Jujutsu students in Shibuya. She was also able to use it to restrain Yuji and Maki. Mind you, this is awakened Maki. Beyond that, we know that when Gojo was was trash talking Sukuna, she stepped up to the plate and she got instantly knocked out by Gojo. But I'd say the mere confidence of stepping up to Gojo is a sign of strength. Despite that fact, we are still unable to gauge how strong she actually is. With all that being said, I also want to add the fact that all the sorcerers from the Heian era, barring Urahime, is able to use domain expansion. Urahime is the exception because we haven't seen her use domain expansion just yet. Before we wrap up the video, I think it's safe to say that if there was a Jujutsu ranking system in the Heian era then a weaker graded sorcerer from that point in time would be able to fare against a higher graded sorcerer from the present time i guess what i'm saying is that i can see a grade 2 sorcerer from the Heian era faring or even beating a grade 1 sorcerer from the current time the skills in jujutsu just hit its peak at the Heian era and this was exactly what kenjaku was trying to replicate by initiating the calling games in my opinion it seems pretty safe to assume that there were probably many sorcerers who would be around the level of yuta and akari in the Heian era but we we never just got to see these sorcerers in the calling games because they never made binding vows with Kenjaku. So that's the video. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. If you have something to say, then please put it in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, then feel free to subscribe.